Hello and welcome to another episode of Space Engineers. And today, we're going to get up to some fun. We are going to create all sorts of power. And turn that power into hydrogen. As uh, we've, we've done a lot of work off camera. Well, off camera from the edited video's perspective. On camera, on stream. Because... Uh, I did a lot of work on the dropship while I was live streaming. And oh, we can take a look what we've done. We've got a fair amount of the main components built. And all of the hydrogen tanks and such connected up to a conveyor grid. So it is all connected to the base. I also did some slight rearranging. We took the... Uh, hydrogen tank that was in this area and we moved it uh, actually put one on each side so we have one there one there and one in the back hopefully the ship will still be fairly centralized for its weight once we take into account all the weight that's going to be a part of the new crew quarters that I made up front and uh, we also did a couple other things in the live stream we expanded the solar tower it is much bigger now and producing more than enough power to run my little base which is excellent and we collected some salvage as you see I have a couple uh, flaming wrecks here ready to get ground down into usable components it was a very good stream Hopefully you guys go and check it out. It was also the debut of Doggo Camera. So if you ever wanted to watch my puppy uh, chew a snack or something. I should probably get rid of this welder first. <laughs> if you ever want to watch my puppy chew a snack or something, uh, you are welcome to. Come and watch the stream. But anyway, moving on from that. Today, 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 we are going to think about fueling this thing up. So, to start off, I'm just going to go and get ice with the Spectre and its drilling capacity. And we're going to put it into our little H2O2 gen. And it's going to go into these fuel tanks. And we're going to get 5% fuel. But that's not going to be enough to do anything more than just maneuver around the asteroid and then aim at something and drift there at a slow rate. What we need is a refueling station. And we're going to use these drills, these static drills so we can pump we can plop down onto an ice node and they will continually make me uh, ore. Now, how these things work is I need to put them onto that particular ore deposit and I need to power them and they'll produce me a constant flow of that resource for free. It doesn't deform the terrain or anything. Uh, they're actually very nice if you have them on servers and such because then you can just turn off terrain deformation but people can still get resources. One thing I've done for this series is I'm using the mod No More Free Energy. So Normal space engineers, ice can act as weak uranium. Because if you have a, a grid that has uh, uh, H2O2 and a hydrogen engine on it, and you just throw ice at it, that grid will charge its batteries by using up the ice, which is not realistic. Because if even if it was perfect 100% efficiency breaking the ice into hydrogen oxygen and then burning it or using it in a fuel cell or something should at 100% at efficiency should be net even power but hydrogen engines are obviously some sort of internal combustion so because like how loud they are and their animation and such so it shouldn't be positive it should actually be net negative Hydrogen shouldn't be this, like, quickly used thing. It should be this thing that you stockpile and then use as a 
fuel storage. I, did, I had the exact same script last season, and I really like it, and I enjoy how it makes me change the way I build, where I have to make these like hydrogen refueling stations, and I don't have to worry about having H2O2s on my grids. I just have big tanks of hydrogen, and I'm good. So we're going to do something like that today. We are going to set up a hydrogen power station so that we can go and fuel up our dropship whenever we come back and visit. And it just so happens within the asteroid field, we have a very, very rare asteroid. I'm not sure my spectator camera is. It is closer to the asteroid. We have what I'm going to call an Isteroid. It is an asteroid that is 100% ice. And this thing is amazing. And so we are going to set up a base on the Isteroid. These are very rare spawns, but I love when you find them. There's this nice flat area right here absolutely perfect location to do some base building as such what we're going to have to do is set up a sol another solar tower maybe not this big maybe I i'm not sure what my power requirements will be there but we'll have to set up another solar tower over there and we're going to have to set up one of those drill rigs and then a series of O2, uh, H2O2s uh, and a series of hydrogen tanks and then just leave it. And the reason why I want to set it up now, even when this thing is nowhere near ready to move out yet, is that that will give it a few episodes to stockpile. And it'll just sit over there 15 kilometers away and work. So we're going to do that today. That's our main goal. We'll see if we can do some other stuff, such as, uh, it looks like there's a wreck over there. Uh, it'd be nice to haul back another wreck. And in the next episode, we're totally building a new ship, which is going to be a salvage and building ship, so that we can have large grid, uh, well, small grid, but large conveyor, small grid, and have welders and grinders on the front of it so that we can rip apart the salvage uh, and get those components into our base ready to be used. But in the meantime, we're going to stockpile the Spectre here with a bunch of resources and then take it on over to the ice base and uh, get things started. Unfortunately, well, it was very useful. We put a conveyor sorter on the docking port for the Spectre. Which means I can't use, I can't pull any resources out that way. So we're just going to hover the specter on down here. And we're going to manually transfer some resources out of here and into its bottom. And then we can just fly off that way and head to the, uh, head to the ice droid. So, first things first. We're going to need some conveyorage. We're going to need some steel plates just to build a certain amount of, uh, like, infrastructures so that we can place everything on it. So we'll just do that. That's just auto deposit. Yep, we're good. So we'll just grab, like, a whack of steel plate to start with. Two full inventories. Get. Yeah. And we'll grab some stuff for conveyor junctions. We'll grab stuff for drills. We'll do a battery. We'll do, we need to get a rotor and its part. We need to do a, a hinge and its part so that we can do the solar tower. We'll get a bunch of solar cells, a um, concentrator controller, a camera. We'll get all that stuff ready. And I will put as much as I can into the Spectre here. And we'll fly on over and uh, do our work. Yeah, we are definitely going to have to take multiple trips here. I got this thing absolutely filled to the brim, and I don't even have any large steel tubes. 
and I will need those for this thing. So we are going to take our first load of resources over and uh, get everything laid out at least and hopefully build the battery. And then from there, we can uh, we can look at getting other resources brought out as needed. Ooh. Oh, oh, we just left, but what do we have here? We have a burning wreck that we're flying by. I'm trying to thrust away from it a little bit. Uh, there is assault cannons on the side of this thing. I do not wish to engage with it, but I'm kind of forced to because I, my trajectory is making me slip right past it. Uh, thankfully that looks like it's not going to go anywhere near my base. Okay, good. We will investigate that when we are not full of resources. <laughs> but now I'm sliding sideways and trying to get back on course. Hmm. Let's see. My scanner is giving me a really strong ice reading from this asteroid. <laughs> uh, it's like, no shit, Sherlock. Of course it's going to give you a strong ice reading. It's entirely ice. I bet you could use these uh, asteroids as like a calibrator for your <laughs> for your uh, for your spectrometer. Just be like, hmm, is it reading correctly? Point it at the asteroid. If it comes back at anything but pure ice, then something's wrong. But we've got a nice flat building area right here. Now, for this base location, something I've noticed is the sun movement. Now, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the sun moves uh, from this angle slightly this side of the planet, and it moves in like this way. So it should go around like this and back as a full rotation, if I'm not mistaken. And I mean, I can I can demonstrate that with the f you fiddling around with my day settings. So you can see how it comes right through there. That's the arc of the sun. But anyway, it means that I am right now aligned to the sun's rotation pattern. But that is right off the side of this. That's great because what I can do is if I get some steel plate here, uh, which I need to grab some steel plate. Just a few. I'm so full up on stuff. <laughs> it's ridiculous. All right, I got 18. That's good enough. I can rotate this manually to about there. I think this will work good enough. We can sink it into the train a little bit and go click. And that can be the starting point of our grid. If I go out this way, like, let's go outside. One, two, three, four, five, nine, ten, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eight. No, I'm out. But if you get the idea, if I go out this way and align myself to this grid here, you can see that's now aligned to essentially the solar path. If I put a solar tower on the top of this, it's going to follow the sun 24-7. So I am going to have infinite free power on this base permanently, which is really good. Uh, other thing I'm going to do immediately, just so I can drop some resources, is drop a battery. There we go. And now we can get some... We can get some good amount of steel plate on me. <laughs> but yeah, we can just go a few more blocks out. And that's probably m way more than enough. If I'm if I build a solar tower that comes back that far, uh that's ridiculous. Yeah, but maybe like five more. There we go. 
Then we'll do a rotor and a hinge and a block and a camera on that block. Uh, da, 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 like that. And then we can set this up, get this battery online, and put a uh, custom target co computer here. Custom turret controller. And then this thing will be infinite forever power. And then what I can do is if I bring this armor back this way, this is where all of the H2O2 gens and hydrogen tanks can sit. And then as soon as this armor goes into the terrain, that's where these drills can sit. Because they need to be sitting inside the terrain slightly in order to be uh, to, to work properly. So if these, these things are be sitting like back, say, here, and I can connect up to them with the uh, conveyor system, and then everything will be absolutely hunky-dory and wonderful. So, let's get a real rudimentary solar tower online. So, when it comes to laying out where these drills are going to be... Uh, let's see, which drills do I want to make? I can make an advanced static drill. It should do fastest on. So, why not? And we're going to place it so that they've got the the drill access there at the front. So, I'm thinking it'll look kind of cool if I do this all in pipe. Uh, now, for the moment, I'm going to, I think, go one further back with this. Yeah, that fits. And then I can put a... I want to do a junction like this. Because I want to have this one, and then I want to go out a few blocks this way, and have another one off there, and go out a few blocks that way, and have another one over there. I have three in total. Hopefully, in the end. I, I know these things... Oh, maybe. Maybe I just need the one. These things have like a... Um, uh, a radius where if they're too close to each other they start to uh, um, slow down so maybe maybe we just have the one for now and so we're gonna have tanks on this base as well we're gonna have the industrial hydrogen tank because that just looks freaking cool and uh, they're going to be aligned side by side here probably with a pipe running down the middle so let's go here 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 and here are four hydrogen tanks that we'll eventually have and out of these tanks we're going to have curved pipe coming out of the top and they'll go into a, a, a straight pipe. And then these will be our junctions. So I'll have a cross and another cross. Over here it'll go st straight away. I think two. And then we can dive down from there. Where my corner is. There she is. corner dive down and then this can be a T junction how do I want to do this cross hmm maybe a full junction because I can put some caps on those sides that I do not want to get shown and also that does connect it to the ground which is kind of nice but I'm contemplating this. I could T-junction this. 
And then I could have one miner and one miner like that. Well, let's see how that works. Let's move out this way. Say... Uh, this side is the easy part because there's less ice there. This side moves its way up. So let's go this way. Two, three, four, five. And then we will corner. And then off of that, we're going to place the static drill. Now, the static drill's placement is a bit wonk. And so we actually need a block here to aim at. So if I do that... Uh, oh, no, wait. It's the other side. That's how it lines up. Just like that. So I need to aim at that block for it to connect. And that should be into the front of this advanced static drill. Which, obviously, I'll have no idea of whether or not it is going to work until I can uh, get out here and uh, build it up. But we can do the exact same thing on the other side. Where we can go one, two, three, four, five out this way. And curve. And then this guy needs to have a block. This is the side that I need to have a block to aim at. And now I can aim at this block to align it with the, uh, the pipeline. And then eventually... I think we can build underneath this thing without it getting uh, too derpy of, uh, oh my god, I have a block, I can't extract resources anymore kind of thing. And with that, this little platform is looking pretty good so far. Gotta get some more resources, lay it a bit more out, and then we'll head on off to go get some more stuff from the base. Alright. Well, that's essentially the Spectre completely emptied. There's a bit spare resources that I didn't end up needing. I'll just get rid of these girders into the solar panels here. But we used up pretty much everything. Yeah. A few bulletproof glass and girders left over. So, the most important thing for this base is that we finish off the solar panels and we get the uh, solar tower rotating. So, let's grab on our build planner here. We'll grab the turret controller. I need the hinge part. I need the hinge. I need the rotor part the rotor, the solar camera, and I've got the turret controller, and then I've got this other battery here. We'll grab that bit, and that will get this place at least starting to run. And then I can get one of these drills functioning. So let's get this guy built up, see if he's deep enough in the ore here to work. I might need to place them back one more, but we'll see. We'll grab him on the build planner. And now, we can head on back and get those resources. So now, we can withdraw components and deposit. And we should be able to get all the stuff we need for those particular components load it onto the ship. Now it says, cannot withdraw eight components and 190 other components. Uh, my guess is that we're running out of some kind of resource. Industrial assembler, we run out of iron. Yeah, we're totally out of iron. We do have iron in the cargo container though. Refineries to the rescue. Give me that iron. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas.
So that should be the power cells that I need. Uh, excellent. Just gotta let the base build for a minute in order to get all these bits back together. And then we'll be able to uh, head on back to the other base and do some building. In the meantime, I'm just going to do some salvage, because why not? Okay, so that should be everything into this for what we need to build to get that solar tower functioning, at least the first um, static drill drilling away. Uh, we're also just going to grab materials for just conveyor tubes and just uh, as much as we can, uh, although we need construction components, which they're working on, and we need tubes, which they're working on. So, we'll get stuff. <laughs> it's slowly coming. Come on, work on the tubes, damn it. I need resources. Slowly but surely, we will get enough stuff. We might just want to leave it there and let the base uh, work on building up some more resources, which what I might do is I just go into the industrial assembler here and go for conveyor and then just put like 10, 20, 30 conveyors into uh, production here. And so that'll just work while we're gone. Uh, let's make sure that the refineries are processing iron, which they seem to have completed the iron that they were working on, but they need to do more. And then let's get out of here and go and work on uh, building up that ice base some more. Isteroid, Isteroid. Ah, uh, here we are arriving back at our hydrogen farm. Which, interestingly, the uh, <laughs> the hydrogen farm, if you're on the orientation of that, the asteroid base is like up. And so when I fly here from the asteroid base, I'm like coming down from above on this thing. It's like Ender's Game where it's like, yeah, the enemy, the enemy base is below us. It's that sort of feeling. <laughs> But we should be able to tuck ourselves into the edge here. Yes! Park right there. And that will give us good access while we work on this stuff. So, we need to add these things back into to Build Planner here. So that we can grab the precise pieces that we need. And now... We can get this done. That's it. Hmm. Okay. I guess I had a lot of the materials here already. Rotor complete. Rotor part complete. Hinge part complete. Hinge itself complete. These should all be good. Uh, hinge, I'm also going to... Similar to how I did it on the other one, I'm going to take this 90 and I'm going to change it to about, say... 80, 85, so that way I don't... Somewhere around there. That way this thing just doesn't whack itself into its own tower, and that would make me happy. Um, yes, that's good. And we just need to get the camera online. Just a little bit of computers. Camera! Wonderful. Now with that good, we should be able to zip over here and hold position and get this thing operational. Which I had most of it here already. I just need that last little bit. Now, we can go in here. We've got the rotor. Which we're going to go rotor, solar. And we're going to copy that suffix of solar. Camera, solar. Hinge, solar. Customer controller, solar. 
And now on this custom drone controller, we can select rotor, hinge, camera, velocities. We're going to set these at one because I want this thing to rotate smoothly. And then we're going to auto always aim at sun. And our tower is now functional. We just have to fill it out. But there we go. We should have this thing. It should just rotate on its uh, axis there. And we should have permanent power on this base for the rest of time in Memorial. Let me get this thing done as well. Although, man, did I do it? Did I pack enough power cells? Oh, I totally did. Okay. Gotta, gotta withdraw them through the build planner, though. What? Why are you only drawing three at a time? You stupid build planner. Sometimes, man, build planner is the best thing in the world. Sometimes I want to rip it to shreds because it is like, why didn't you just freaking pull all the materials that I wanted even though you said you didn't couldn't do it, even though you did actually have the materials in the thing and it was like, Nyah. it makes me go crazy. But, even with a single solar panel, these are recharging because um, we're currently not using very much power at all, just 2.27 kilowatts, and we're getting 77 to come in. That solar is um, max possible is 160, current is 155. Couldn't ask for like a 90-something percent efficiency. Good enough for me. It's like 95%. Good enough for this boy. And we can use our lights. Get this area all lit up. And uh, figure out if this advanced static drill is going to work. And uh, active. Now, let's see this thing's control panel. Currently extracting ice! Yes! Turn it on. Wow! Jesus Christ! Ah! <laughs> that reminds me. In season four, I added these things of uh, <laughs> the um, the mod files to make them silent. Um, if you are the mod author for these uh, static drills. First off, great mod, love it. Secondly, do you desire me to still have eardrums? Because this is what you're doing to me, is you're blowing my eardrums out. And it's causing me to go, and I will have to go and edit the files again uh, to lower this noise or turn it off completely because this is ridiculous. I don't even want to go near it again. I'm going to access it over here. God, it's still loud and I'm so far away from it. Um. God, I'm turning it off. It's so loud. It's so loud. Absolutely. Devastatingly loud. Okay. I, at least I know it works. <laughs> And we do have some um, upgrade nodes in the back, so we can do some modules. We could theoretically throw like a speed module on this, I believe, and have this just start cranking out uh, excess ice. But if we look at it here, we can see that it has created 640 absolutely free ice. Nothing. I, I didn't need to do anything for that. And... Uh, Although I haven't gotten my solar stuff fully laid out yet. Oh god, what are we... We're behind a really big asteroid. That's why it's dark here. Although, interestingly... We're still getting full power. Hmm. Nice. Let's see. If I turn that bugger back on... Mr. Super Loudness... Uh, how am I doing for power? We're depleted in an hour. However, 
we only have one solar panel working. So that's not bad. This thing is only taking 1.8 megawatts. We can make this work. Nice. All right. The last thing to do. I want to get this thing functional before I uh, finish off the episode today. Is we need to run some more conveyor out and down. We got to put H2O2 generators here. Uh, I'm contemplating how I want to lay them out. I'm thinking just stacked. We will have uh, just a little cluster of like nine of them or something like that here. And then at least just one for now. And I'll get one of these hydrogen tanks built. And one of the H2O2 generators built and the pipe to it. And then I can just at least leave the base starting to function at least. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, we got to get this this pipe. Uh, let's see, how many pipes? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. About 20 pipe. Um, so we don't really need to do... We just know we need about 20 pipes of worth of stuff. And we need hydrogen tank. And then we need uh, H2O2 and another few pipes to get down to the H2O2. And then some solar. And that's all we need to bring back. Uh, did we empty again? Did we uh, expel all of our resources? Oh, we still have a little bit here. I think this is some um, con conveyor uh, stuff. Yes, conveyor stuff. So we at least get a few of these built up. Alrighty then. Alright. Next resource order. About 20, 25 uh, conveyors. Some solar panels. An H2O2 generator. And a hydrogen tank. Back to base. Base, how you been doing? Have you made me lots of components? Are you refineries still working on iron? No, you're not. Come on, I still have 23,000 iron. Get on it. Freaking refineries. Iron, then stone, then scrap metal. Yes, please. And have more iron. Blah. Okay, good. Okay, so... H2. Add that to build planner. We already have the large industrial hydrogen tank on there. And then we'll just do uh, as many conveyors as we can do. And that'll be it. And then uh, once we can do that, we'll just get a few more solar. And that'll be it. We'll be done. And I can do some more building and transferring of resources off camera for that. But, let's see here. I don't really need this gun on me, do I? I have to put it into the cargo container. In my mission briefing. Eh, only takes 0.4. I'll keep it on me. I gotta remind myself what I'm here for. Transferring materials. It's just a lot of large steel tubes. Okay. So that should be the hydrogen tank and the H2O tube. So now, let's just get to conveyor pipe, and just, let's just grab conveyor pipe stuff until we run out of resources related to it. Until the base yells at me, wait, 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 we're at a uh, small steel tube or something. Because I can always use it over there, there's a lot more pipe to uh, get built. That's it, we're full. Time to head on back. Which, I am loving this Spectre. I think this is one of the best respawn ships I've made for a series. I think it rivals, or even beats the Bison in terms of its overall usability. And this thing even just, it flies like a dream. And it flies so well. 
with realistic thrust. Can you imagine this thing flying along with uh, just normal thrust? It'd have like zero issues. Alright, head on back to the ice base. Now the big question is, how many kilometers does it take me to stop? Let's try at two kilometers, going from 123. It's a good thing we're not pointing directly at the ice base. As it looks like we're going to slide on by. Maybe. We're actually slowing down pretty much nicely in time. Oh, we actually stopped in time. Nice. My reverse thrusters did better than I was expecting. All right, let's get stuff built up. Oh, I have a bunch of solar stuff on me right now, so I gotta plug that in immediately. Yeah, and a bunch of solar panels. There we go. Get disoriented here in space. Uh, I'll go do some boat ploof. We'll just put this away for now. And, all right, cannot be deposited. We need to get stuff for this thing. Let's go. I think that's the only thing on my build planner. Now we'll just cut the solar panel stuff out. And now we can go and uh, really start building. Yeah, industrial hydrogen. Uh, next up, let's just grab some interior plates. Should have some in here. Yep. Oh, I also need a little bit of steel. And we can set up our H2O2 generator, which I'm thinking block away like that. We should have the ability to walk through here if need be and walk around this stuff. And then this O2 H2 generators will be right here and that way I can make a block of them like dun dun like that and make three and then I just need the the one pipe coming down the center because they're all connect to each other should be good and then from here we're going to do which pipeline I'll do T for now I was thinking how I can make this look kind of cool but I get T junction will work that'll leave some options open in the future we'll put a curved and then just a regular couple pipe pipe now we can get this guy built up and with an h2o2 generator i will manually move over a little bit of the ice right now this guy we've got it connected we just need to connect its pipe and connect the pipe back to there and finish off whatever we can do with the solar tower and then hopefully, the base will be it be power positive with the solar power that I have uh, on hand. Um, if it is, that's wonderful. And I can just turn it on and I can fly away because it's going to be very, very noisy and I don't want to deal with it. And then I can just let it fuel up slowly. Uh, come back here and uh, expand it off camera. There we go. Okay, that's pipes. Awesome. So this thing should have already... Is it using up its stuff? H2O2 generator. Uh, are you not... Pump, putting stuff into the tank? Hydrogen tank. You are connected to the H2O2 gen. Uh, H2O2 gen has ice. This is working. Uh, I haven't had to refill my bottle yet. I want to assume it's all working. <laughs> and it's connected to this thing at least. And with that, at least the start of our solar array has begun. 
Uh, we'll obviously need to expand it in the future, as I'm not sure even that is enough to take care of the power requirements. But at least it went from depleted in an hour to depleted in three hours. The O2H2 is still not doing its thing, but it does have 22% inventory. And we will leave this here for now. The big thumpy, um, <laughs> the big thumpy drill over there. Doing its work, being really loud and annoying, but, uh, at least extracting a good amount of ice. For now, this ice base is complete-ish. It's at least functional, and I think that the O2H2 would uh, start up after I did a reload of the save. But I'm not going to do that right now, because this save is takes such a long time to load with all these asteroids. It's a very annoying thing to do. For the final bit of this episode. Let's go head out to the Voyager. This is going to be a bit of a trek. It is 40 kilometers away. So we're going to get up to speed. And we're going to see what the heck is Ember doing in my system. Oh, and we are leaving our asteroid field. As we burst out into open space zero worries about hitting anything out here and we are 35 kilometers already away and we're still 13 from uh, Voyager here so it is nowhere near the asteroid cluster 4 kilometers let's start our braking thrust here start to aim a little bit closer to it as it looks like we are sliding by oh and on the camera we got something right max magnification we have some sort of little solar pro as we uh, slip by it here let's uh let's rotate to get our large thrusters pointing that direction to help slow us down. Right. Move on in a couple hundred meters away. What is an Ember probe doing all the way out here? It's a very shiny probe, too. Let's park up. Take a peek. So you've got Ember Voyager on its antenna, which is a simple probe, single thruster in the back, hydrogen tank, gyro, couple batteries, couple uh, solar panels to keep it running. This actually is a it's a pretty decent probe concept, actually. I could probably use something like this myself, maybe replacing the uh, hydrogen for ion, and I can use it to uh, investigate some planets and such. Wanted. What the heck is this? This text includes an image of an engineer in a blue spacesuit. Wanted, <laughs> dead or alive. The engineer calling himself Katajashi is wanted by the Inver Corporation for the following crimes. Destruction of property, theft, murder, and arson. <laughs> Reward 120 million credits. Oh, that's a lot of money. Bring the perpetrator or his remains to the Ember HQ in the Ares system. Okay. <laughs> I don't... Uh... It's kind of not good that uh, Ember's out there advertising that uh, they want me dead. Um, well, alrighty then. Uh, how about we go and let's tow this thing home so we can destroy the evidence. <laughs> but we shall work 
move on over and grab this bad boy. Come on, I'll just grab it right on the the ridge there. Got it. And not too terribly heavy. Oh, it's so cool. This giant asteroid field. That's all I've explored of it so far. Just that cluster. That is so cool. <laughs> but let's aim for the asteroid base. Uh, actually aim for an area that is clear of asteroids. Get up to speed. Oh, and it's trying to thrust backwards on me. You little bastard. No, you don't. We're going to turn that off. You don't get to... You're coming with me. You don't get a choice in this. And we can head on home. But. That is going to be it for this episode of uh, Into the Dark. And uh, Ember's out to get me. Who knows? Maybe some assassins will show up at some point. Or some bounty hunters to uh, try to take me in. That might be kind of fun though. <laughs> but we managed to in the this episode I use my spectator camera here we managed to get something of hydrogen platform at least started we are going to have to work on this some more expand it out and use it to fuel up our new drop ship that we are creating is uh, this thing is going to be a gas guzzler when we uh, get it all kitted out. But that's going to be it for now. We're out here hauling the Ember satellite home. Thanks for watching and good hunting out there, fellow space engineers. Oh, an editor, something for you. It, look, it's my doggy. <laughs> Don't go cam. Good girl.